Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Cancer Solar Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. Today, we use the opportunity of the high of energy to bring our collective focus to the C group eight of esoteric psychologists and we will talk about manifesting the new psychology with our special guest from Denmark, Kenneth Sorensen. And today we will experiment with our format a little bit as after Kenneth's presentation, we will have Michael Linfield and Alex Radcliffe joining the conversation uh, as a speakers who focalize other seed groups during the year cycle of presentations bringing together the energies of two triangles focused in the sign of cancer the third ray triangle and the seventh ray triangle and uh, so i welcome kenneth thank you very much to taking this responsibility to lead us today in the alignment and the focus on this topic of the new psychology in preparation for our full moon meditation so, Kenneth, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, now I'm interested to know if uh, there's sound. Can anybody hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Great. Good. Uh, I will now show my screen and you should look at now my PowerPoint. Is that correct? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, fine. Then let's start. First, let me uh, start by by appreciating your offer to let me introduce this very important topic about uh, the seed group of psychologists. Uh, I have for several years, together with my good friend Son Hauke, worked. Um, in a very practical manner to try to manifest a little part of what we believe is uh, the new psychology. And um, that's why um, I have dedicated this Cancer Full Moon uh, to, to the new psychology and uh, particularly uh, the part of the new psychology that is about uh, the dissemination of the seven rays. Uh, and I prepared some uh, slides uh, for you, so, so you can follow uh, the work uh, that we have done for some years now. And uh, it will, of course, be available for everybody afterwards. Uh, let me bring here a schedule for the, for the webinar. Uh, after this short presentation, I will make a short alignment for everybody so we can tune in to the available energies uh, at the moment. Then we will, uh, I will uh, say a little bit about uh, the eighth seat group, uh, the psychologist. Um, there's perhaps somebody out there that is not that familiar with uh, the seat group work. So I will very shortly just uh, present uh, some basic facts about it. Then uh, we will go in and, and, and discuss the new psychology. And um, after that, we will present uh, what is uh, the company that I'm working in and that I created together with John Hauke and other co-workers, which is actually an online test uh, for the seven types that's been in progress in 2012. And after that, we will uh, look at the cancer, uh, the astrological energies, because it's actually a very suitable time for birthing the new psychology or new thought forms and new ideas in relation to that due to the different uh, ray ray energies available here now. After uh, my short presentation,
presentation, Michael Infield and Alexandra Ratcliffe would, uh, will join the discussion and bring in a new aspect. Uh, and hopefully some of you will also come in with your uh, thoughts about the situation in the, in the chat. And then lastly, uh, Michael Linfield will conduct a full moon meditation um, and uh, we're looking much forward to that. Okay, I would like to start uh, just with uh, this beautiful pictures from the Institute of Planetary Synthesis. Uh, that I have provided a link uh, for it. I think it's a beautiful mandala which gives an impression about what the 10 C groups is all about. Uh, and let me just start with some quotes from DK. I think it's relevant to, to bring in uh, some of the central uh, statement about what is the 10 C groups. And here's uh, one quote from DK. Uh, where he speaks about its uh, group form to inaugurate the methods of the new age as, regard, as regards group work and the training of disciples and the preparation for initiation, along with other groups all over the world who have caught the new vision and are working under the inspiration and the impression of the masters. The foundation of these schools of the mysteries, which will later be restored to the world and to which I referred in letters of occult meditation, may be possible if all of you measure up to opportunity. So in one respect, we can say that the 10 seed groups are in some way forerunners for the, the later uh, mystery schools or schools of meditation. Uh, there's some uh, facts about the 10 seed groups. Um, the groups of nine, as they are also known, were initiated by DK in 1931 and disbanded again in 1939. The work or the, the, the group and the, the messages that the, the, the groups of nine were receiving from, from DK through Alice Bailey is uh, available in the books Discipleship in the New Age, Volume 1 and 2. There were actually 51 disciples uh, worldwide uh, attending the experiment. And during these years, uh, there were five groups established or in the process of formulation. It was the group of telepathy, the trained observers, the magnetic radiatory healers, educators of the new age and the political workers. And after the group was uh, disbanded in 1939, there was uh, several reasons for the disbanding uh, due to uh, lack of interest or the group were not, it was, it was a, a, a failure in some respect, but an experiment. Then after 1939, uh, a new group was, um, was uh, collected or, or assembled and it was 24 disciples in 1904 that was selected from the original groups of nine and they formed a new group experiment in initiation. And this experiment closed in 1946. In March 1949, uh, only 16 members of the original 55, 51 remained part of the group and only eight of them were active. Among them were of course, Alice Bailey and Foster Bailey, Roberto Sajoli and other of uh, the core members. So from one point of view, we can say that it was uh, uh, a failure, but from a, from, from a more positive point of view, it was uh, an experiment and there was a lot of work being done and uh, a lot of uh, uh, um, experience was uh, gained through that period. The 10 C group uh, and the purpose was to, establish uh, certain focal points of energy which can constitute magnetic centers or rallying points for the new religion, the new medicine, the new psychology and education and the new politics. And what's really important 
Union and what, why, why it's so important to still be aligned with these groups is that each group has its inner counterpart. This inner counterpart is a completed whole and the outer results are still only partial. So there is in the inner worlds, there is a group of, um, the, the 10C group remains active. They work on the inner, inner planes and inspire uh, world servers all over the world with the different objectives uh, that is uh, hold um, in, in, in these uh, 10 groups. The 10 inner groups is forming uh, one group and it's related to the aspirant of the masters and each of them is expressive or governed by 10 laws embodying the controlling factors in group work. These 10 inner groups embodying 10 types of force and working synthetically to express 10 laws and they are an effort to bring in new and different conditions and hence produce new and better civilization. So it's actually an endeavor to, to manifest uh, some spiritual laws and principles in the world through service. Let's now focus on the group of psychologists. This is the uh, group we have uh, focusing uh, on uh, to, to, tonight. So the eighth group, the psychology, the psychologists will form this next group and they will be concerned with the revelation of the fact of the soul and with the new psychology, which will be based upon the seven ray types and the new esoteric astrology. The major task will be to relate through approved techniques, the soul and the personality leading to the revelation of divinity through the media of humanity. They will also act as transmitters of illumination between groups of thinkers and as illuminators of group thought. They transmit energy from one thought center to another and above everything else, they transmit the energy of ideas. Let's, uh, there is some, uh, in, in, in this presentation uh, tonight, I will really focus on the new psychology and in particularly uh, the seven ray types. Uh, I will not uh, go into the new esoteric astrology and there's also another objective in relation to, to the psychologies about, uh, about um, the three subhuman kingdoms and aligning them with the uh, superconscious. But I know Michael Linfield will touch on that in his own way. You will, you will uh, um, receive this uh, presentation so you can study this for yourself. So what is the new psychology? Let's try to, uh, to, um, yeah, to synthesize it and, and bring out the principles. As far as I can see, the new psychology will be based upon the seven ray types and the new esoteric astrology. And the new psychology will offer means to integrate personality and soul. And that's particularly uh, uh, two very, uh, or let's see, seven factors that is very important for, for the new psychology to bring forward. And that's the idea of the five ray energies, you know, the, the soul ray, the personality ray, the mental ray, the emotional ray, and the physical ray. These, uh, the human being is a, a system of, um, of rays. Um, and also the two uh, important astrological influences is, uh, is prominent. And that's the, the energy from the sun sign and the rising sign. So basically, uh, at the core of uh, the new psychology is um, our obligation or duty to, to bring this idea out about these seven types of, of energetic influences, which every man and woman is uh, conditioned by. It's Stereo Psychology Volume 1 and 2 and Race and Initiation will be the foundation of the new psychology. 
And, and then there's two other uh, important issues. Uh, the understanding of the significance and technique of genius is one of the tasks of the new psychology. And the new psychology must be based on reincarnation. So this is, uh, this is one of the uh, important, uh, important aspects. Then we have uh, the question of how can we manifest uh, the new psychology? And I found a very important quote in uh, the last uh, chapters in Esoteric Psychology 2, which I think is uh, worthwhile thinking about. And uh, I would like to, to, to read this uh, because I also think it's really central that we understand what DK is, uh, is telling us in this quote. Sometimes I, uh, sometimes I ask myself what real use can be made of this teaching and whether the wealth of information is of real service. Knowledge when giving must be used. It must be made of practical application in the daily life. Upon all of you who read these words as they come fresh from my heart, my mind and lips, rest the duty of doing three things which I give to you in the order of their importance. One, the molding of your daily lives upon the basis of the imparted truth, if it is to you indeed a truth. If you are attempting no matter in how small a way to apply the truth as you see it to your own life, then this teaching are for you. And two, the building of that structure of thought which will embody this newer teaching. You can, if you so desire, help construct the thought form of the new age teaching. You do this above all by your thought, by your practical application of any truth which you may have understood to your personal life at any cost, by your sacrifice and your service to your fellow men, and by the constant dissemination of any knowledge which you may possess. Distribution of the teaching over a long period of time. Have you done anything along this line, thus shouldering your responsibility? Question mark. The thing that I that really struck me was um, the building. Oh, was uh, the 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 line the building of that structure of thought which will embody this newer teaching. So. DK is inviting us to help build the structure of thought, to, uh, to present um, um, the best possible thought form presentation of the wisdom of the seven rays and esoteric astrology. So it's up to us to find a, a bridge from the wisdom and what he has uh, presented for us through his books and out to the out to the public and this is exactly what has been at the forefront of um, the work that I've been involved with uh, the last uh, 10 years or so let's let's see uh, how um, we, we, we did that. I would like now uh, to uh, present uh, um, uh, a work that I've been doing, um, yeah, actually since 2007, 2008, together with my dear friend and colleague, Søren Hauge. Uh, we decided um, around that time that we would focus an effort to, to bridge uh, the, the, the wisdom of the seven rays out to mainstream psychology, make it practical and create a new language around that. Uh, because we could see that uh, the seven rays and, and, um, um, and the teaching around this was uh, flowering and it was, uh, it was, there was immense, a lot of uh, very, very skillful and a beautiful work by many, many people, particularly Michael Robbins and the University of the Seven Rays. Um, but it was still within the esoteric thought form. 
And we could see that uh, it was difficult to bring that thought form out to, to business life and out to the mainstream psychological world. So we decided that we have to create a new language around the, the seven rays. And uh, that's what we've been doing since. In 2012, we, um, we created a, a, a company uh, dedicated to uh, bring out uh, the, the wisdom of the seven psychological types and uh, developing a, an assessment tools. And it was a huge enterprise that has just been finished. Uh, it took us uh, actually uh, six years to accomplish it. We call, uh, and what I would like to do now is to, to present some uh, key concepts and some ideas and some practical examples of how we work with the seven rays, or we call it the seven energy types uh, in, in uh, mainstream uh, psychology. Uh, we have uh, created a language and uh, an online platform which can uh, which is particularly focused uh, on um, teaching counselors to use uh, the typology in as part of their therapeutic or coaching work but it's also a language that is well suited uh, into business life and um, yeah, let's see. Uh, let me show you the, the following uh, slides and, and give you uh, an overview of, of, um, of what we have been doing for some while now. Uh, we call it Jiva U because Jiva, Jiva is about the Jiva Atman, that's a Hindu concept for the soul. So, and U relates to you, so it's actually the name Jiva Yu is actually about the unique individuality in you. Uh, we, we call it energy uh, psychology. Um, instead of esoteric psychology, we created uh, the, the word energy psychology because it's very easy to understand what it is. It's all about energies uh, and it's about psychology. We have uh, Beside the, the, the new type of language, we also created an online testing tool based on a questionnaire, which gives the user a hypothetical soul and personality type and, a, and an extensive report of the qualities, motivations and developments uh, in relation to the soul and personality type. We also uh, has uh, a profile um, covering 63 different talents and 60 uh, 56 different glamours and I will later uh, present them. And then we have created a training program for counsellors in type assessment and development and it's a 21 days format and we have um, educated around 80 people uh, at the moment in, uh, in four, four groups in Denmark and one group in Norway and we are preparing uh, for a new uh, teaching coming up uh, in October, uh, both in, in Denmark and there's a, a group also working in Norway. They will also try to, to start a teaching around, around this. Uh, a new language for the new psychology. The, the, the seven types is part of a, uh, uh, you know, is, is part of differential psychology and typology is today a billion dollar industry worldwide. There's so many different types of typology out, out there. Myers-Briggs type indicator, type indicator, the Enneagram disk and the multitude of different types of uh, typologies. But what uh, I think they are lacking, they, relax, they lack the soul focus. Uh, and they don't have the levels, the five levels or the, the six if we bring in the monad. Uh, and I think uh, the seven, seven, the philosophy of the seven ray of the seven psychological type is, 
is uh, so much um, bigger. There's so much more into it than the ordinary typologies out there. So what we have created is a soul-centered typology without the cosmological features, uh, only five levels. So we're not speaking about masters and ashrams and uh, planetary uh, origins uh, of the energies, uh, but that would be clear in my next presentation. So actually it's an exoteric presentation of esoteric psychology. It's an advanced transpersonal presentation and a more simple model. The foundation is the seven psychological functions, as you will see, but our overall purpose is to bring the wisdom of the seven rays out to business and counselors in a form they can assimilate and integrate. That's a key purpose of uh, what we are doing. Uh, let me present now uh, some slides that will show you how we uh, talk about um, the seven rays or the seven energies. Uh, and for us, we have we have designed the whole language on on basis of psychosynthesis. We think that psychosynthesis is the, is the best suitable psychology available for presenting the the, the seven types. Uh, Okay, sorry here. Uh, here we are. So as you will see, we will use uh, uh, psychosensors uh, pretty much. And of course, we have developed uh, our own um, language around it. But as you can see, the first uh, slide uh, we show here, and this is something we bring out when we are, are working with the counselors and, and giving them an overall perspective of what is the seven energies. Um, and as you can see, this is the famous uh, egg diagram of Asajoli, and we show here how the, the seven energies pour in through the soul and the soul uh, brings it down into the to the personality and around the central um, the observer or the conscious eye in the middle of the egg diagram we can see how the seven different energies is distributed throughout the personality uh, in the center you can see thought will and feeling the three in our system, the three uh, primary uh, psychological functions, but the four others will also be involved here. Here's another diagram, uh, also using Asajoli's um, uh, egg diagram, and it shows the five bodies. The number one, the red, is uh, the physical body, uh, and it's um, and it's. Uh, um, and its ray, uh, ray structure. It's a dynamic or first ray physical body. Then we see uh, the blue emotional body and the orange mental body. And fourth is the personality uh, radiation. And the total egg is the radiation or the causal body um, integrating it all. That's another way to, to, to present in a non-esoteric way, but in a transpersonal language, the 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 idea of the the five bodies. And as you can see, we are not bringing in the monad because the monad is too abstract; it's too far away. So we have limited ourselves to transpersonal psychology and below, and avoiding going into the cosmological um, perspectives. And as you can see, um, it's, um, it's, it's workable. Here we have another diagram uh, showing uh, the different symbols for the different types. Here we have a, a mandala created uh, for the seven types. And in the outer circle, you can see the, the archetypes for the seven types that we have chosen the hero for the first rate type of the dynamic type, the illuminator for the sensitive types, 
and uh, so on. Now we are uh, having, uh, this is one of our really basic um, basic diagrams which we communicate to people who have never heard about this. It's really easy to understand and uh, as you can see, we, are, we, we take uh, the perspective of the seven psychological functions. We say every person has uh, seven psychological functions. And these seven psychological functions, the esoteric foundation for them is the seven head centers. Uh, so we have an esoteric foundation for, for everything we are doing. But we're not talking about the seven head centers. We, we talk about brain centers. And uh, the seven psychological function is will, feeling, thought, imagination, logic, passion, and action. And as you can see, um, uh, and as you can see, uh, there is, um, there is, um, I get a question here, my screen is blank. I hope uh, some of the uh, focalizers or the technical uh, people will help there. Okay, as you can see, uh, it's the seven rays coming through, but we speak of it as seven psychological functions. These seven types of, uh, of uh, psychological functions gives us seven types of behavior. Uh, the will give us, uh, when we develop will, it gives us a dynamic uh, behavior. Uh, developing feeling gives us a sensitive uh, behavior and so on. Under each of the seven figures, we have uh, different types of um, uh, archetypes which we have dedicated to the to the to the soul level uh, uh, and the personality level. We have one level of soul. Uh, we are not uh, here uh, working with introvert, extrovert, or, or the uh, the two uh, model which is um, which we use in in, in esoteric psychology. Uh, but uh, on the personality level, we have divided the personality and an introvert manager and an extrovert pioneer when it comes to um, the dynamic personality type. Another uh, diagram here is uh, the seven psychological functions. As you can see, the three we have chosen uh, the first and second and third ray is uh, the will, the feeling and thought. And um, the other three uh, primary uh, psychological functions. And if you combine uh, will and feeling, you get passion. If you combine feeling and thought, you get imagination. If you uh, combine thought and will, you uh, get logic. And if you combine will, feeling and thought, you um, you, 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 you develop action. Uh, and it's all related to the seven ray types. I know there's a lot of um, different opinions about this. This is only our take. Uh, we have to decide for one model and it really works, this model, according to our experience with it. Here we have uh, the seven um, the seven psychological types, we call them the dynamic type, the sensitive type, the mental type, the creative type, the analytical type, the dedicated type and the practical type, all with uh, a psychological uh, function uh, which drive its development. Here's the five levels. We use the five levels uh, body, emotion, mind, personality, and soul. And this is where we really differ from all the other types of typology. We, uh, as you know, dedicate a, a type for each of the levels. Here's just another presentation of the same. Uh, seven body types. Here's a... Uh, 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 and as, as you know, you will get this and can study it for yourself. I just want you to have some kind of a short uh, overview of, uh, of it all. Here you have uh, the different types of energies. This is the seven rays connected with the seven psychological functions, creating seven energy types. Each have a, a particular motivation. 
Then we have the soul types with their archetypes and the personality types. Since, uh, since uh, uh, we started this work, we have also um, brought out some literature. And I, uh, as, as, as part of this endeavor to bring the seven rays out to, to a, a larger audience, I've written three books, and two of them is in the English language at the moment. The Soul of Psychosensus uh, uh, was coming out in 2015. And it really focusing on the seven core concepts according to Asajoli. And I think uh, psychosensus is, is really the, 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 yeah, the psychology we need to use in order to bring this out. Integral Meditation is another book uh, which deals with the seven rays uh, uh, and the seven ways to, uh, to soul integration or soul realization. Uh, is another way to, to talk about it in a non-esoteric way. I draw on my own experiences with different types of meditation and, and uh, give an overview of uh, the seven ways to, um, to self-realization. Energy Psychology is uh, the new book. Uh, it's coming out in, two, in this year, 2018. And if you can see down here, uh, I have provided a link uh, where you can download uh, the first three um, the first three chapters finally uh, let me show you something uh, from the GVU testing environment it's based on a questionnaire uh, as you can see uh, as this presentation shows you uh, and let's look at the profiles I'll just have to see here what time it is. Yeah, okay. So we have here. Let's see. Okay. What we have created is um, a, an online assessment tool. And uh, I will give you an insight here into the, the, the complete profile. Uh, and this link, link up here, you can download a, a complete profile as an example. Uh, it's in the Danish language, so, but you can, if you download it, you will see how much it uh, entails. It's about 90 pages. What we will bring out, we are about now to translate it, uh, or we are about to translate uh, our free personality pro profile. This is uh, uh, an assessment tool that will give you a hypothetical personality type. You will answer 84 different statements and uh, the system will then calculate what type of personality you will be and you will have around 10 or 15 pages describing that personality profile. Then we have an identity profile and this is the combined personality and soul type. And here you will answer 168 statements and then the system will calculate uh, your hypothetical personality type and, and soul type and you will get a, a written profile for around 30, 30 pages or so. Then we have created a talent profile with 63 different talents. And let's uh, have a short look. Uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, I guess it's here. As you can see, this is in the Danish language, but we have created, uh, there's nine levels, and the first level is the soul level, and we have created seven different types of uh, talents on the soul level. The, the talent for the soul level uh, for the hero and uh, the first ray type is leadership. Then there's two talents for the personality level, two talents for the mental level, two talents for the emotional level, and 
to challenge for the physical level. And when the coach uh, will um, analyze the results of these talents, then when they will get some ideas of the underlying mental type, the emotional type and the physical type. And we have done the same for, for, the, for the glamours. Okay. We, will, we, ha we have also a coach admin. Uh, so the people that have uh, received the training, they will be able to, together with the client, they will be able to go in and change the, the, the results. They will look through how the, the person answered the questions and they will be able to change the answer because the results is only uh, the client's own perspective. And when we analyze it up through uh, which type of education and work they have uh, had, then a much clearer perspective can be brought through. So the co coach will have an opportunity to really calibrate uh, the, the client's uh, life uh, and uh, how the coach perceives the client. And then in, in, in a collaboration with the client, bring out the, the best uh, possible hypothesis. The, the whole system is, uh, is prepared so we can have different language and interpretation versions. So uh, now we are creating also one for the English language, but we could also have a Spanish language. And we know that people are also interested in, bring, in, in, in writing new interpretations, one suited for business life, uh, leadership training, some for team building, some interpretation. Yeah, and actually an esoteric interpretation could also easily be, be filled in to the system and a brand new uh, assessment uh, will come out and a new profile. So it's very, uh, it's very flexible. Right now we have created a, a profile that is based on transpersonal psychology and personal development um, uh, in a psychosensitive uh, um, yeah, thought form. But we will be able to develop many different types of uh, profiles, team profiles and 360 degrees profiles. So uh, it's really a work in progress. Okay. This was uh, actually um, the last uh, slide. Uh, let's see before. Okay, yes, this was actually uh, the last slide uh, that I would like to present. And um, as you can see, you will be able to, to download the three first chapter of my new book uh, in the English language and uh, a complete profile and and then uh, in the start of 2019, I think we will be ready with an English edition of the free personality profile and our identity profile. It's almost 1000 pages uh, of, uh, of text we have into the system. So that's a lot of text to transfer, to translate. Okay, I think um, I, will, I will stop my presentation now uh, and just uh, giving a few thoughts on the Cancer Full Moon uh, before we bring in uh, Michael Infield and Alexandra so they can um, bring in new thoughts about this. Um, cancer uh, Full Moon or the time where the sun goes through uh, cancer is pretty much a, a period where it's really uh, good to work with the integration of the subconscious, self-conscious and the superconscious. Uh, we are pretty much influenced by Neptune and Neptune is the, is the ability to transcend uh, and its ability to, uh, yeah, to work with the astral plane and uh, create that longing and that aspiration and transmutation and transformation of the, of the subconscious. Uh, so 
all that creates a longing for perfection. And there's a, in some place, PK speaks about the astral plane or the upper levels of it as the sea of glass. And the sea of glass is this transparent field. And um, it takes a good, um, a good amount of uh, harmony through or, uh, harmony through conflict uh, and a lot of work with the individual astro, uh, astro body in order to create these transparencies, this calm sea. Uh, but in, in, in this time, we really uh, can, can bring in uh, these uh, types of energy that makes it possible to, uh, to, uh, to create um, a sea um, available and uh, has with the ability to reflect uh, the intuition of the buddhic level. And uh, I think uh, cancer is, uh, and I have myself, I have a mass in cancer and, has, and I'm a six ray personality. So I really uh, had to work uh, a lot with, with, with cancer and all this emotional stuff. Uh, but Neptune is really a harmonizing uh, influence in, in this month. And we also know that cancer is ruled by the third and seventh ray. So it's really about creating a home for the new psychology. And this has been actually been, been the purpose with this presentation to give some thoughts out of how we can create that lighted house for the new psychology as a community. But it's also a way to strengthening the bonds to the inner family, the ashram, and the group of psychologists that we know is part of the 10 seed groups. Uh, we also know that Sirius is uh, in 13 degrees of, uh, of cancer, um, and um, it's called the brilliant star of sensitivity. So it's, it's about to, to bring that that um, pure love, love wisdom into the, the astral level. Uh, and um, and uh, from there on, um, create this uh, sea of glass or this field of transparent sensitivity. Okay, I think that was all for me now. Uh, and um, I would like to, uh, to invite um, the other uh, presenters uh, to this to this meeting. So I wonder now if uh, Michael or Alexander could unmute them. Yes, I'm I'm unmuted. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Michael. And uh, please share uh, your impressions or ideas of of uh, the new psychology. Thank you. I'd like to take a deep breath first because you have given us so much food. I think if we just take a, a moment to assimilate this and, and let it uh, permeate us. Thank you, Kenneth, because I know myself for several years I've been sen sensing this impulse that wants to land called the new psychology. And I believe that you mentioned psychosynthesis is probably the best model we have so far that represents the esoteric psychology, and I, I would agree with that. And I look at psychosynthesis and the way that it's uh, utilized now as a practice for supporting the integration and the infusion of the soul and personality. So it deals with the first fusion. It helps humanity come to that point where it can be one with its soul. I believe that further down the line in the, in the years to come, we need to add a spiritual approach that supports the second fusion, where you have the integrated and soul infused personality, which is like the fireplace. And this fireplace then needs to invoke and receive the fire of the monad. And so I believe that the new psychology in the years to come will add new dimensions to what psychosynthesis already has given us 
that help us with the second fusion. And if I can put this in context, when I look at the first and second fusions, it's really building the Antikarana. It's really building the living bridge between the fourth and fifth kingdoms. And I was musing this morning, preparing for, for this evening. It's, it's evening here in Italy, by the way. Um, thinking that just as we are seeking to integrate the soul and the personality, the, we're told that the fourth and the fifth kingdoms are seeking to merge. It's as though on a planetary scale, something similar is happening. The, the planetary logos is going through a great process of alignment and integration, and it's reflected in our own process of blending the fourth and the fifth kingdoms. And so this is incredibly timely because it has to do with the return of the Christ, and it has to do with the initial stages of the birthing of a sacred planet. So I think you've presented us with some very down-to-earth practical tools and approaches that you have gleaned from the esoteric psychology. And for me, I need to keep holding them in this greater perspective of this is preparing for the reappearance of the Christ. We are building a lighted house of humanity. And that which illumines the lighted house of humanity is the Christ consciousness. And the Christ consciousness comes about once we have the fusion between the soul and the personality. And then the fusion and the uh, merging of the, the higher will, the monadic will and fire inside the fireplace of the soul infused personality. So I, I like to have these images uh, because all the, uh, an image is worth a thousand words. So this image contains all the words that you have just spoken. And I was also reflecting on why DK said that the new psychology and this C group number eight was important in connecting with the lower three kingdoms. Now, what has this got to do with connecting with the animal and the vegetable and the mineral kingdoms and helping, helping with their transformation? And I was thinking that if you look at each one of us, if we are truly made in God's image after his likeness, then we constitute a fractal. And to the degree that we can integrate ourselves, all aspects of ourselves, we become an integrated fractal. So when we show up in the planetary psyche, we have the ability to connect because we've made that inner connection ourselves. And so the connecting the, the upper three and the lower three through the mediating center of humanity through the fourth center, um, you can see that in different scales. And so for me, we're being asked, if you like, at a planetary level to connect and bring this path of light from the fifth kingdom through to the fourth kingdom and into the animal, vegetable and mineral. We become this living bridge. And I think that's that's our task. So there's a lot one could say, and I think I don't want to use too many words, but one of the things you said was strengthening the bonds of the inner family, which is the ashram. And what I'd like to say very briefly is that I believe we have to reimagine and uh, re-engage our relationship with the fifth kingdom because we have so many old thought forms around it. Um, people refer to it as the ascended masters and I tend to think of it now as our elder brothers and sisters because what the fifth kingdom represents is the full flowering of the human spirit and that was planted, that seed was planted in the fourth kingdom and we in the fourth kingdom aspire to what the fifth kingdom has already embodied. So there's a very deep and intimate connection. We're family. So when you said strengthening the bonds of the inner family, I thought, yeah, we're family. And so it's our elder brothers and sisters. And as we move towards them and they move towards us, it's like a reciprocal approach. And so we are actually building this bridge between the two kingdoms. And I believe the new psychology is helping us build the inner bridge of our own psyche 
so that we can we can do this in the in this in this greater setting so um, i have a, more things to say but i'd love to hear from alex now and i also realize that we're providing a lot of food um, this evening so i i want to make sure that we we don't overeat so that that's all for me so alex my friend Hello. love to hear what you have to offer can you hear me all right Hello. Yes. Yes. Good. Yes, we hear you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for such a beautiful presentation and so full. And thank you, Michael, for what you said. Um, these books, I can't uh, recommend them highly enough. Uh, Kenneth, you've done so much work, and it's such a contribution. Uh, such a service to humanity. Uh, they say that the psychologists are the healers of the individual psyche and you are healing the whole atmosphere, the psyche of humanity through this work. So I've been um, absorbed in it and uh, absorbed in your books and in uh, Asagioli and I've been asking myself, what, what does this mean to me? Um, how can I make use of this and how can I make use of this for others and how can we make this available and you're obviously working on making this available and at all I always come back to uh, being the change that we want to see in the world and practicing this psychosynthesis ourselves so we don't need to wait we can be practicing it anytime anywhere and that's it's what a surgery recommends that we organize our parts around our central self and we understand our personality and we transform our personality and we there we therefore emanate our transformation um, now it says for cancer I build a lighted house and there and well but DK says is the house you are building yet lit is it a lighted house or is it a dark prison? Some are lost in the illusion and know not what is reality and truth. Others walk free in the world of illusion for the purposes of saving and lifting their brothers. And if you cannot do this, you'll have to learn so to walk. So this is, an, this is important to keep in mind because humanity as a whole is in a state of turmoil. Um, and we're told this is prior to a great step forward um, of self-conscious unfoldment, hopefully. Um, but since we have become a complex society, a digital society, a consumer society, a society, a warring society, um, there are many external motivations in the world for influencing the psyches of men and for manipulating them and for persuading them. And I think to a very large degree, we will see this happening now in the world that the psyche needs healing. Um, it's fractured. Uh, they speak about the attention economy, which is basically your attention being sold um, at the cost of your well-being. And people, people aren't aware that they have a choice. And what I love about Kenneth's, Kenneth's books and Asagioli's teachings is that the point is that we do have a choice. And I think a lot of people don't actually realize that. And I think sometimes we don't realize it ourselves. So we have a choice of where the mind goes and we have a choice of what we think about and we have a choice of what we practice. So I've been practicing uh, these disidentification exercises that are beautifully laid out in Kenneth's books and of course in the Sajoli's books. And what I discovered was that through that practice, you can, you can find you know, where your very serious identifications are. So again, with the aim of, of purifying my own psyche, with the help of purifying the atmosphere and, and those I affect and, and reach and teach. And, um, and what I discovered was that 
And I, as I got closer to the self, the greatest identification is with the mind. Isn't the mind, isn't my mind who I am? Isn't my, my thoughts what make me? Um, it's true, the thoughts make the world. But then when we take that disidentification exercise a step further and rest in the observer, which we all know about, um, then we realize that any peaceful, positive thought form we create isn't, can't possibly be as peaceful or as beautiful as actually resting in the observer. So I've personally taken this on, inspired by your talk and your work, to practice this further, to, to speak about it more. I want to quote from your book, we cannot observe consciousness itself because the eye cannot observe itself, but it's something we can become aware of, we become present in and awake to. Consciousness itself is neutral like white light and always carries the quality of purity. Many Eastern traditions state that from an existential point of view, this light is our identity. We will always be this silent, never changing and static reality. It will always be the same, an eternal and imperishable ground of conscious being. Those are the words from Kenneth's book, Integral Meditation. And I have personally found that very healing and I'd like to share it with others. And I hope we will will practice it and we can take it out into the world because I think when we cannot detach from what's filling the field of consciousness at the moment, then we are adding to the poison and to the pollution. So that's basically what I wanted to what I wanted to offer and say thank you for the inspiration. Wow. Thank you, Alex. Um, when you were speaking, I, I, you know, I had this sense of the new psychology really is helping to liberate the prisoners of the planet, as DK yes. said. Yes, exactly. And, and the other thing that Kenneth mentioned about the new psychology, that reincarnation is essential. Now, what that means is that when we do psychological counseling, we're not just looking at our early childhood and uh, everything came out of the family conditioning. We're also looking at what's carried over from other lifetimes as unredeemed elements, unlearned lessons. And so it actually adds a whole new dimension to understanding how to redeem the shadow, how to, how to work with all the unredeemed aspects and, and bring that darkness or bring light out of that darkness and, and uh, to, because we have to realize that this critical moment on the planet, humanity is facing the taking of the first initiation. And my sense is that the forces of retrogression are doing all they can to thwart this, as we're seeing at yes. the moment. So um, the building a lighted house is incredibly important because as we know, the first initiation and the motto is, uh, Christ is born within the cave of the human heart. And it's, it's that lighted house that, that needs to be built so that humanity can pass on along its path of destiny and help the planet fulfill its destiny. It, it's, for me, it's that simple. So thank you, Alex, for that. There was, there was, a, uh, there was a particularly phrase about, um, or idea about uh, the concept of building a lighted house, because in order to build that house really consciously, we have to awake uh, as, as the observer and as the builder of that house. And I think the new psychology will learn us to find what type of colors is, is uh, most appropriate for the Dharma that we are supposed to fulfill, the, the, the five ray body, and the astrological um, qualities coming in. So uh, I really think that, that uh, at the heart of the new psychology will be this awakening to consciousness itself, 
not just consciousness in ourselves, but the consciousness also in of the all of the existence. Um, and from that still point, we try to sensitize ourselves so we can become aware and feel into the different types of energy that pour through us as the seven rays. Uh, that's quite the um, my take on some of the most important things occurring in cancer. I also the feel that. Is, oh, sorry, right. carry on, Alex. Yeah, no, I also feel that a lot of people feel powerless. So this is uh, this new psychology gives back the power to the individual. So yeah. These days, people feel more of victims, powerless. A victim of circumstance and uh, you know and all the emotional upset that goes with that and this is the this is the key to freedom i mean as you say in your book often mm. choose freedom mm. and I, i've remembered that you can choose freedom every moment mm. we have the power and it's through the power of the will and mm. the use of our attention and we have to do it for everybody <laughs> for our own sakes And and that's why you know psychosynthesis is the best model for the new psychology. Mm, absolutely, yes, because it's through awakening to pure consciousness that will emerges, will as choice, and uh, and and also will as the will to be, the will to be whoever we are. Uh, I think. Uh, This will really liberate us. And and another thing that I really discovered is that, you know, I think the solar angels is at this moment really approaching the astral levels. And you know, the solar the solar angels as as solar fire. You know, it's the fire element uh, coming through the, the watery atmosphere. And this will always create a lot of fox, a lot of glamours, a lot of I know that from my own life, whenever I feel overshadowed by by my solar angels, then a lot of troubles usually uh, occur simultaneously uh, due to this inflow of uh, solar fire. And this is also happening now on a global scale. And of course, um, this will create all the distortions and uh, the lies and the propaganda that we are seeing uh, so frequently right now. In the um, in the UK, I don't know where else, but in the UK, certainly there's a huge mental health crisis and especially amongst young people. And mm -hmm. I know psychosynthesis psychotherapists who work with young people and there isn't a greater gift to give them than to teach mm -hmm. them that I'm not this body, I'm not, I have a body, I'm not the body. Mm. I have emotions, but I'm not those emotions. I have a mind, it's magic. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and important. Uh, can I just ask Kenneth how much more time we have? And I'll ask Alexander because um, um, I, I think we, I, we, we have around uh, 22 minutes if we are going okay. to have one hour. So I think uh, it's uh, your time to uh, to come in uh, with the meditation. Well, maybe there's some say, there's some other things to before say that. Yeah, I think maybe yeah. let so uh, Sasha, do do you want to um, say anything, or is there any any suggestion you have for how we move forward? I think. Uh, Thank you so much, Kenneth. Yeah. Um, you've really gone a long way today for well, all of you together creating um, the sea of glass that you spoke of, Kenneth. Um, I certainly feel very inspired to go and um, get your um, books and just to hear you, you know, that quote that you, uh, that you um, mentioned by DK about knowledge when given must be used. Um, it must be made yeah. of practical application in the daily life. And you know that importance of embodying these teachings in order to build the new structures of thought. So yeah, that's very much in line with what the 2025 initiatives um, focus is this year, um, which is radiating the living light of the soul and grounding the wheel. So you, each of you has made a very valuable contribution. Thank you so much. And we did want to open the um, discussion to the 
wider group, if there's anyone out there um, who would like to contribute or ask a question, um, please raise your hand. And Daniela will unmute you. I also just wanted to say that I'm sitting here in New Zealand with the full moon um, as company, the lights coming through my window. It's still dark here and it's been pretty wonderful to have <laughs> that um, the light is company. It, it may be that there's been, as Michael said, a lot of food for thought and that we might yeah. just simply need to hold it and, and yes. um, enter into the meditation. It feels like that's the, the natural mix. Right. We, we need a few digestive enzymes in the <laughs> field, Claire, I think. <laughs> Michael, would you like to go ahead with the meditation? Thank you. Um, I will. Uh, I just, uh, just want to catch my breath as well, not that I'm out of breath, but I want to be in breath with everybody. Yes. So I suggest that we actually start by becoming aware of our breath, breathing slowly and rhythmically, and imagine the 50 people on this call conspiring, breathing together. until we breathe with one breath. I'd like to say a couple of things before we go into the meditation. We know that the full moon is always looked upon as an opportunity to contact hierarchy or contact the ashram of the Christ. I also think it's a, an opportunity to enter into a co-creative partnership with the ashram. It isn't just contact, it is actually a working relationship we, we're being asked to enter into. And all this is part of preparing the way. And I like to think that in order for the externalization to begin, we have to play our part by the internalization of the hierarchy in our own lives which means that we begin to embody those qualities of the soul so that our lives change frequency. And then we start to sound a note that is closer to the note of the fifth kingdom. And when we come closer, when we come into resonance, that resonance builds a living bridge between the two realms, between the fourth and the fifth. And that really is, the focus of the meditation that I'd like to offer. It's a very simple meditation. It's, it's not going to be an occult meditation and we're not going to do a tour of the universe. We're going to basically focus on building a lighted house, the lighted house of humanity as it stands ready to take the first initiation. And for that light to descend on earth, a path of light needs to be built between the fifth and the fourth. And I know that some of you are aware of the reflections on the Christ that Alice Bailey wrote back in 1949. I think it's called I Stand and Wait. The, the last few lines of what she wrote um, are very important. Let me read them. The path which I must tread to reach your place is one of light. It's quality, goodwill, and it is almost ready for my feet. Work on, failure is not for you. I come. So every time I read the, the, the full reflection, and I recommend that people do that, um, it, it really brings a sense of 
how do we play our part in preparing the way for the reappearance? As I say, the externalization begins with the internalization in ourselves of the qualities of the fifth kingdom. And also, we can use our collective imagination, which is what we'll be doing during this meditation, to build this lighted path between the two kingdoms. And it's a path for the descent of the Christ into earth and a path for the ascent of humanity into the higher realms. So with that framing, I'd invite us to become aware of our breathing again. Become aware of the heartbeat. And sense 50 other hearts beating as part of this group gathered here in the ethers around the planet. Let us synchronize our heartbeats. May our heart beat as one. And from our own heart, we sense inside the fire of love, which is the eternal flame of divinity that resides in us. And this fire of love sends out a beam of love and light to touch the hearts of all gathered here today. And we weave together the group heart. And at the center of our group heart burns the fire of love. And in the center of this love, we stand and serve. And we send a beam of love into the heart of humanity. And we are one with our brothers and sisters. And we send a beam of love from the heart of our group into the heart of the hierarchy. And we are one with our elder brothers and sisters. And we stand together humanity and hierarchy, tasked with building the lighted house of earth. So let us enter the silence. And we invite and invoke the presence of the Christ to be with us. and to infuse us with his love and his light.
we are filled with the love of Christ. And through the power of our group imagination, we visualize a path of light and love leading from the heart of hierarchy, from the plane of buddhi, into the heart of humanity. And let us visualize the Christ walking that path with every step drawing closer, with every step we feel his presence increase until it enfolds and embraces the whole of humanity and suffuses the sphere of earth with light supernal and love eternal radiating from his heart. To prepare the way for the Christ, we must become the way ourselves. We must become the path itself. And we are told that the Christ sounds the great invocation each day as a blessing for humanity. So let us visualize ourselves standing with him. And through the power and rhythm of this mantra, let us create the conditions for his reappearance. And as we sound the great invocation, after each stanza, let us visualize the energies being anchored into the etheric substance of the earth. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Oh.
become aware again of our breathing as a group and the beating of our heart. And know that the fire of love that burns in the center of the group heart is the fire that is the living Christ. May we play our part in the one work. May we build the lighted house together. So be it. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Michael. What a really wonderful, beautiful full moon meditation. And uh, let me just say thank you for the opportunity and honor to present this work and for the good collaboration around this topic, which is so important. Uh, is there any final things that has to be concluded or then uh, please? Um, thank you, Kenneth. Yes, um, just a few words before everyone goes and thank you, Michael, for that very powerful and gentle meditation and um, to all of you for attending today and um, especially Kenneth, uh, Alex and Michael for the gifts you've brought us, multi-multi-layered gifts that will be ongoing. So thank you. Just wanting to mention to our upcoming webinars, just dates for your diary. The um, July 14th um, is the Cancer New Moon, which will focus on the Sustainable Development Goal number two, Zero Hunger. That's July the 14th. And on July the 28th, which is the Leo Solar Festival, Heidi Rose Robbins will present on the Seed Group of Creative Workers. So we will all continue out now into our respective days or evenings with the intention to strengthen the bonds of the inner family and to build the lighted house for humanity. Before we go, I would just like to, I like us to sound the mantra of the light. Radiance we are and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. Thank you and blessings to everyone.